Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Anderson, Interim Transition Pastor here at the Presbyterian Church of Wyoming. Thank you for joining us this morning. We really appreciate having uh, all of you, hundreds of viewers who are participating and worshiping together, perhaps in your own home, maybe uh, listening while you're driving your car. Uh, whatever it is, we're grateful that we're able to be together as God's people. Thank you for being a part of this. Today we're going to be looking at a story of Jesus' disciples and how they were dealing with the resurrection of Jesus as they made their way back to their homes, a town called Emmaus. Gathered in the Spirit, let us hear God's call to worship. The road to this moment might have been surprising disruptive, disappointing, grief-filled, exhausting. In this moment and in all our moments, whatever they might be, we are met by the risen Christ. Open our eyes, Holy One, to your unexpected presence. Let us worship God. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts. We want to see you. We want to see you. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts. We want to see you. We want to see you, see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts, we want to see you, we want to see you. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, open the eyes of our hearts, we want to see you, we want to see you. that God loves us as we are, let us make our confession. Gracious God, we confess that these days are so hard. We travel down the road weighed down by grief, confusion, and anger. Our shoulders sometimes slump. Our eyes are often downcast. Our steps feel heavy. We like clarity and certainty, and so much about our lives feels uncertain right now. Help us to keep walking, even in our uncertainty. Open our eyes so that we see you as and how you come to us. In silence, please make your own confession this morning.
Our job is not to know everything or figure out exactly how God comes to us. Our job is to trust that in Christ, God does come and will set our hearts on fire with love. Hallelujah. Amen. And now, friends, having received the peace of Christ, I offer that peace to you. The peace of Christ be with you as it is with me. Amen. Hi, my name is Adam Hayden. I'm the Youth Program Director at the Presbyterian Church of Wyoming. And this is a candle. You like that suspense? Anyway, if you look at it, it's a candle. You can see the wick right there. Right there, where's the lens? Yep, little wick. Now, you might be wondering, why am I holding a candle? Well, if you are a kid and you've ever been to PCW, you have probably played the game Hot or Cold. The game Hot or Cold, for those of you that don't know, is where you take an object, we often use a candle at church, and we hide it. And then we invite our friends into the room, and they have to find the candle. And when they get close to the candle, we say, oh, you're getting hot, you're getting hot, until they find it. But if they walk away from the candle and they're way far away from it, we say, oh, you're cold. You are so cold right now. And you know, we love playing this game. And this is a game that we can actually play with one another as it relates to God's presence and faith. See, when we are doing something that's, uh, that's really good, that's, that's loving others, caring for others, serving God in that way, we can encourage one another. Now, we don't have to say, oh, you're, doing, you're being hot right now, but we can say, oh, you're doing a really good job. And the opposite is true. When we see a, a brother or a sister or mom and dad or sibling or whoever do something that's kind of wrong, we can say, oh, kind of cold right now. You're not doing the right thing. Here, come, let me help you. Let me help you do the right thing. And you know, with faith and with God's presence, it's not as if we walk away from God's presence. In the game, you literally, if you're not by this thing, we say you're cold because you're far away. We're never far away from God. God is always with us, always near. Even when we're not doing things that are godly, even when we're doing ungodly things, God is still near and still with us. But sometimes we need to encourage one another to have eyes to see that God is here. No matter what's going on in the world, whether there's a pandemic or not, no matter how bad we feel, maybe we were having a terrible day and we're throwing lots of tantrums, no matter what, God is near and God is with us. And we can help one another know that by just telling each other, hey, it's okay, God is with you and God is. All right. If you guys want to say a prayer with me, you can put your hands together if you like. If that helps you pray, you can close your eyes and you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your presence. Please help us accept it and help others accept it. Amen. This Sunday is a couple Sundays after Easter, and our scripture text today that we're going to examine is one that takes place after the resurrection of Jesus by just a, a, a day, actually. It's found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Now, this is a really long passage of scripture that can get a little tedious, so I decided to... Um, tell it to you, uh, reading pieces of it, uh, to help make it flow a little bit better for you. Now, on this same day that Jesus was said to have risen from the dead, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village, their hometown, called Emmaus. It was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked with each other about all of the things that had happened in Jerusalem during that week. And while they were discussing a stranger came and joined them. It was Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, but their eyes, the Bible says, were kept from knowing who he was. And Jesus asked, what are you talking about as you travel down the road? The two men looked at Jesus with a sad face 
And they said to him, are you the only stranger in town who haven't heard about this man, Jesus, and how he was unjustly tried, taken to the cross and died? And now it's reported that he has risen from the dead and that he's alive. We don't really understand what's happened. The man traveling with them, Jesus, whom they hadn't recognized yet, said to them, Oh, how foolish you are. How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary for the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and the prophets, Jesus, the stranger, and they didn't know who he was, began to teach them all about what was to have happened. As they came to the village where they lived, they wanted to talk more with Jesus, so they invited them to dinner, and they gathered together in their home, and Jesus taught them some more. As they broke bread, the scripture tells us, and shared the wine, their eyes were open, and the disciples saw that this stranger was Jesus. And then Jesus was gone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, everyone. As we come to the scriptures, the word of God this morning, I want you to pay close attention because this story is one that relates to our lives in times of upheaval, and when the world seems to be going topsy-turvy on us. So we're going to be looking at this story in Luke 24, these men walking to their home in Jerusalem and meeting Jesus, but not recognizing who he was until the very end. You know, there are times when life begins to spiral about us so quickly that we can't catch our breath. It's so drastic that we lose our sense of stability. It's like the ground under our, under our feet is rolling about, and we're not sure what life's about anymore. And this is somewhat what was happening with these two disciples walking to their hometown of Emmaus. The story's only told in Luke's gospel. So that tells us that this is a very important story for Luke's audience, mainly non-Jewish believers, so that they would understand that Jesus died and gives salvation for all people. This journey to Emmaus that we see today is both a literal journey and also a spiritual journey. They were on their way somewhere. They had a a mission. They had a destination in mind, even while they had this conversation about the events in Jerusalem. But it was also a journey that was one that took them spiritually, in the end, to a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. And their faith grew deep roots because of it. And that's part of our journey today as we reflect on this text. We want to take a journey of faith and let the roots of faith grow deep within our own hearts. And you know, these disciples not being able to recognize Jesus reminds me about how I am sometimes, and and maybe you can recognize that in yourself too, that there are times in our lives that uh, Jesus is right there and he guides us and directs us and we miss it totally. It's almost as if our eyes are blinded and it's not until afterward from hindsight we go, oh my gosh, I missed that. I wish I had been on, on the top of my game right at that moment. So let's look at what happened with these disciples. Apparently, our our experience is not an unusual one. So that's an encouragement for all of us. There are three tools in this story, and you may have picked them up, that help us know how we can grow in our own faith and draw closer to Jesus and have those times when we are more quick to recognize when he is present among us and with us, ready to help us. And there are three things that we look at. And the first one is 
an easy one. It's the simplicity of conversation. The simplicity of conversation. These disciples were headed to their hometown trying to process everything that happened, and they joined in apparently what was a lively conversation so that the stranger, Jesus, whom they didn't recognize, asked, I want to talk with you. Tell me what you're talking about. And they began to gather in this conversation group. I remember one time back a few years ago when I was at a Super Bowl a game at a, at a restaurant with a lot of other folks who were all rooting for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, this was back when I lived in Philadelphia and we were at a restaurant in South Philly, so everybody was rooting for the Eagles to win this Super Bowl game. They didn't win, but the conversations in that whole night, never varied from the game. We ate our meals. Nobody talked about their meals. We all talked about the next play, the last play, what they should do, what they shouldn't do, what the coach should do now. And in the end, even though the Eagles lost their game and the Super Bowl, the conversations continued as we diagnosed what went wrong, what can happen the next time, maybe next year. That's what conversations do. They draw us in close to others. Conversations help us to analyze. Conversations help us to draw close to our topic. And this conversations we have about Jesus, like these disciples going to Emmaus, when we have those conversations with one another, we begin to draw close to each other and to God as well. So that simplicity of conversation is very, very important for us. Those conversations open the door to revelation. Remember that. Those conversations about faith open the door to revelation. Their eyes were opened at the end of that night. Keep that in mind. There's a, a second tool that's kind of put out for us in Luke's account, and that's Scripture itself. Scripture itself. The two disciples were walking to Emmaus and talking about everything that happened. When Jesus joined them, he wanted to know their take on things. So they gave them their perspective on Jesus and who he was and what he was about. And then Jesus took the Scriptures from memory and told them all of the prophecy from what we call the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, that pointed to this Messiah who would, in fact, lose his life and gain it again on our behalf. That's phenomenal. When we include in our conversations the scriptures, we begin to go deep, and the Spirit of God loves it when we begin to talk about Jesus from the Bible. And the Holy Spirit begins to open our eyes and we begin to have those revelations that we need to have in our life. So Jesus, in the scriptures, changed the conversation a bit, added to it, and gave them depth so that they could grow in their faith. And by the way, the scriptures that Jesus used weren't Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. It was Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. It was all the books of the Hebrew scriptures. That was their Bible of that day. And then they were so entranced, these disciples, with Jesus' conversation, that they invited them to stay overnight and have, have a meal with them. And here's the third tool, intimacy. They invited him to their meal time and to abide with them in that culture to offer hospitality of a meal and housing was one of the most intimate acts of relationship that that culture knew. And Jesus was wrapped in that at this time. And the disciples were as well intimacy. As Jesus was drawn into the meal, what happened? He broke bread and their eyes were open and they saw this was Jesus. The whole time Jesus was there. That's so exciting. 
And when we take the time to draw close to God, join with others in those moments of intimacy, when we take time to pray, to read scripture, to share in those conversations, we will grow deep roots in our faith. You think about that. Amen. people today, I will offer a guided prayer based on the story of the two people walking on the road to Emmaus who meet the risen Christ. There will be times of silence for you to reflect and offer your own prayer, either silently or out loud. Let us pray. 
Begin by growing still and centering yourselves. Take a deep breath and let it out. Take another deep breath and let it out again. Just as these two followers of Jesus invited him to stay with them, we can do the same. Risen one for this time of prayer, stay with us. Stay with us. Stay with us. Remembering that the Risen One came to these two followers as they walked along the road of their lives, we can recognize that he does the same for us. Whatever road we are on, whatever unexpected situation we find ourselves in, he comes to us as we are. Take a moment in silence to tell God how you find yourself today. The two on the road to Emmaus poured out their disappointment and grief, saying perhaps the saddest words in scripture, but we had hoped. Take a moment in silence or out loud to name your hopes, your hopes for yourself, people you know, the world, that perhaps right now seem unrealized. Maybe even begin with the phrase, God, I had hoped, and then fill out the rest of that sentence. Just as these two followers did, we also ask the Risen One to stay with us. Stay with us, each of us, and all of us. So for those people and situations for which we are hoping, pause now and invite the Risen One to stay with them and bring his love, his compassion, his wisdom, and is healing. Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? Pause here and invite the Risen One to show you what is burning in your heart today. What words of comfort or challenge does he offer you? What are you being invited to do, to ask, or to become?
God in disguise, we pray that our eyes will be opened to your presence, even if you come in ways we don't expect. Ignite our faith for the sake of your love. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, the prayer that connects us with God and with all Jesus' followers throughout time and space. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, Lord God, we give grateful praise for gathering us together as your children, for the word of Scripture that encourages us and will help us to grow. We give you praise that you are with us this day. And so as God's people go forth into the world with the courage that comes from walking with God. Go into the world, joining in conversation, joining in the revelation that God will give to you in the power of the Spirit to know that Jesus walks with you. Be at peace. Amen. Thank you.